Okay, so hi everyone, we are going to start. So I'm um, Mr. Phipps, this is uh, Mr. Common Criteria, and reality, I'm Yaroslav, and this is Matej. And today we are going to talk about uh, one tool that's called sexers.org. Uh, basically, you know, the idea is like we will tell you about, you know, security certifications, but not from, you know, like what security certifications are, but you know, insights you can actually get from different uh, security certifications and uh, yeah, so and you will not find it an, anywhere else. Okay, so agenda for today is: what is SecCert's project about? How can you use SecCert's project? Because it's for everyone. It's not only for us. We you know do it for you. Then we will take a look on some you know like a business analysis. You know what you can do with the tool. Then Matthew will present you know some results, uh, selected results of this you new know, business analysis. The thing is, he worked on this as. Uh, Students project here at uh, University of Technology, and then we will, you know, talk about some, you know, conclusions of the research goals. Okay, so let's go to the success project. So the question is, what are security certifications? If you were at DevConf last year, I had like you know this, you know, half uh, an hour, you know, talk about you know all different you know kinds of security certifications. But basically, the goal is to have some assurance that some, you know, let's say, certified products or parts of the products are secure, or let's say, secure to some extent, because you can never, you know, have anything that's, you know, 100% secure, or we wish we could, but we don't. And uh, uh, one reason why we are doing this is if you, for example, you have your own very nice, you know, product, and you'd like to sell it to governments, governments are getting crazy about security. Governments are getting crazy about having a stamp that your product is secure. So for that reasons, we have to go, go through this, you know, all evaluations to get a stamp that our products are indeed secure. And then if you go to the procurement, you know, process to the different government agencies or regulated markets, you always need to prove in some way that you have some of these, you know, security certifications. In this case, we will be talking about two certifications where you know the sectors project is uh, aiming and focusing at. One is uh, FIPS 140-2 slash 140-3. This is the federal information processing standard uh, governed by uh, NIST in the US. So this is mostly like North American standard. It applies in United States and Canada. There, basically, I saw. It's also ISO standard, because 140-3 is now based on ISO standard. However, as far as I know, it's really not you know, used outside of North America. So you will not see it you know, a lot in Europe. But for example, FedRAMP, the next big thing for almost everyone, if you want to sell your cloud service to US government, you can't you know, sell it without having FIPS. So it's super important to have FIPS. And the next one we are going to talk a little bit about is common criteria. So common criteria is now like really international standard. Uh, there is some you know, kind of like recognition between different countries. So if let's say you do your certification in United States, it will be recognized in Europe and so on. Uh, it may change a little bit with EUCC, the new way of doing common criteria in Europe. In the future, we will see. But basically, this is another you know, like framework you know, to to do evaluations of, of your products that they are secure. So this is very brief introduction. So a little bit of terminology. We are going to use it a lot. So there is one thing that's called scheme. Basically scheme is you know, that you know, government agency or national uh, agency that you know, will you know, grant you. This certificates, for example, in the United States, it's NIAB. In Germany, it's BSI. And there are you know, many other you know, uh, national or international schemes. Then you have so-called third-party accredited testing laboratory. So basically, these are some you know, third-party vendors you hire. They have some you know, kind of you know, accreditation that they know what they are doing. They sometimes don't know what they are doing, but it's a you know, different story. And these you know, people you know, will evaluated your products according you know, to the you know, standard uh, vendor that is us, for example, or you. So basically, the company that you know, has a product that they want you know, to get you know, evaluated 
by one of the standards. And then there are you know, many certifications artifacts. I can you know, show you that later. One is, for example, security policy and FIBS, that basically explains you know, what kind of algorithms the product you know, supports or the cryptographic module supports, uh, how you should use it, guidance, how to you know, install you know, that software, and so on. Then security targets, security reports for common criteria. Exactly the same thing, like it explains you know, what are the security features in your products or assurance you know, features in your product. So this is very you know, brief you know, setting up the page here. And now let's get you know, to the most important thing and what's something that we want to talk. So what is actually this you know, sectsearch.org product or project? It's upstream project, it's open source. This was initially developed by guys at the Masaryk University, the Crux team. It's now a very you know, diverse group. It's part of you know, what, one of the big, you know, bigger projects. So now it's uh, Masaryk University is involved. This university is involved. Red Hat Research through Martin is involved in this project. There are you know, a lot of you know, students, PhD candidates working on it, professors, and even managers like me. I'm just you know, talking to people like, hey, you should not do this because it's not the way how it works. And basically the thing is, I told you about these you know, artifacts that you know, part of the evaluation or the validations are. These are posted on some you know, website somewhere. Let's say NIAB website, uh, NIST website, whatever. So the, what the project is doing, basically, all these you know, different artifacts are downloaded and somehow semi-automated uh, process to extract interesting you know, features from these you know, artifacts, not only about security, but also about you know, other you know, interesting things that are there. And this is done for both PIPs and common criteria. Uh, I will show you a quick demo at the web portal, and there is a QR code at the end of the slide, so you don't have to you know, Google for it. Uh, very nice feature is there is a full text search. One thing I mentioned as the last thing is an archive of these you know, certification artifacts, because what these, these you know, certification body will usually do, then the project you know, gets out of validation, they just remove everything. So if you are then, you know, looking for something, for some documentation, whatever, you will not find it any, anywhere. Again, uh, this project actually archives everything. So whatever is downloaded is stored somewhere on the server, unless you know, the space runs out. And uh, let's say if you know, in 10 years someone will be interested you know, to find out some of these you know, PDFs, that's one thing I really want to talk about, you can you know, download it. Uh, then interesting thing is like you can have a graph of dependencies. So that's one of these you know, things that used for sec security research. Basically, if you have one product you know that is uh, vulnerable to whatever thing, you can basically you know, take a look. You know, what other you know, products depends on these uh, certificates? That's an interesting thing. Then uh, what it has is there is also a, like a mapping to national vulnerability database or CVE, so we can see this product is might be you know, vulnerable to you know that CVE or that CVE. And the good thing is, what you can do, and we actually plan to do it one day, is you don't have to depend on upstream project because it's, it's, this is open source, so you can basically download it, deploy it on your own, and for example, enrich the data with your own confidential information. Let's say uh, one of the things that we are looking with Matya is like how we can you know add let's say life cycles that uh, Matya will show you some you know graphs later, or some you know other information like non-public products, whatever. It's not you know big deal for Red Hat, but for some companies this could be very you know interesting you know to be able you know to access and process this data locally. Okay, this is basically, you know, that kind of, you know, architecture I told you about. So you have the certified product, there is a some vendor, let's say it's Red Hat. You can have evaluation laboratories, so for example, now we use Lightship for common criteria. There are these, you know, websites with, you know, all the certificates or FIPS certificates. These are processed, downloaded, and now processed. Uh, there are extracted data. Uh, it's you can you know, see it from the sex first web page. There is API we will be talking about, and there are some like other you know, analysis and visualizations. Again, we will talk about it. And 
this is the GitHub repository, this is the CV database. Again, I will touch it a little bit later again. Okay, so when you know I'm asking you know, how to describe this project, I call it a giant database of certifications artifacts with API. So that you know makes you like use it. Try you know to find whatever information you will be interested in in this project. Okay, and there are now we are getting you know to the research portion of you know, what we are you know trying to do with this data is initially this was developed by Masaryk University. They are the security researchers behind like very nice, you know, CVEs. I you know Google, Google them, it's it's great. And basically as they are security researchers where we're looking into, into ways how to attack different, you know, certified products because it contains a lot of you know information that otherwise is under NDA or whatever. But we wanted you know, to take a look on this data from business perspective because, for example, we would like you know, to compare to what, what our competition is doing what, uh, if, and, and so on. So I will talk a little bit about later. So for security, uh, security matters. So there are several things you know, we can get. Dependencies between certificates. This is what I was, you know, talking about. You can get a, get a very nice, you know, graph representation and see, again, like this, you know, ID card is vulnerable in, let's say, Austria. It could be, you know, vulnerable in Slovakia, Estonia, whatever. So these are these are actually one things that they are really, you know, working on. Then you can get a lot of, you know, detailed information about, the, let's say, uh, operating system or smart card, whatever it is. That's usually, you know, under NDA. And they found ways, so a lot of information you can, you can get other way. Then the CVE matching, basically the question was, are certified products more secure than non-certified products? So what the team was doing is like they tried to match CVEs through CPEs and some heuristics, and uh, then you know list all CVEs that are applicable to non-certified version and the certified version we have some, you know, doubts, you know, how it's used, especially for Red Hat, that uh, it's a big product with, you know, a lot of, you know, packages, a lot of CVEs. And one of the things is that the target of evaluation, for example, for common criteria could be very small compared to the wall rel. But we have some ideas how to make this, you know, better. So it's interesting, you know, research. And of course, one of the important things is adds transparency. So basically, when all the data are somehow, you know, downloaded, it's uh, definitely you know, nicer and better. But let's take a look what we are doing and why we are using this tool. So the first thing is you can get general ecosystem statistics. That one of the interesting things is like I'm the guy who actually you know, does this at Red Hat. And for example, we want to certify an, another product. Let's say we are not talking about RHEL, but we will do, let's say, uh, Red Hat certified. Uh, Certificate system, RACS, and now you want to pick the best third-party lab, third-party vendor to, for your job. So what you can do, you can just pick randomly. That's not something you, you want to do because you are paying them a lot of money. And way more money you know, depends on selection of like lab that can you know, get you through this process. And we are talking about a process that can take multiple years. It's not something like for weeks, so it's a lot of money, a lot of, you know, time and resources. So one of these things that you always you know, try to you know, pick the lab that has most experience doing something. So for example, certificate systems, that means CAPP, Certificate Authority Protection Profile. And now you want to you know, see all the labs that, for example, recently did this certification uh, protection profile. So that's one of these you know, use cases. You want to avoid some labs. For example, if you see that some lab is declining, and they have you know, less and less you know, certified products. That means something is going on. They are probably not you know, performing as you know, people would expect. And uh, for the general ecosystem, is like you can you know, see how long evaluation takes. I mentioned FIPS 140-2 and 140-3. So where was a transition between dash 2 and dash 3? Now, according to the statistic, it can take up to 700 days to receive a FIPS certificate. So you have a certification that should be a security certification 
and you have 700 days old cryptographic module. What is more secure? Well, you can, you know, guess. Then the other thing is you can do this competitive market analysis. For example, there you excel against your competition or where you have gaps. So for example, one of those you know, things that we were looking into is like, what other architectures, because these certifications are usually you know, very you know, architecture specific, what other arch architectures other vendors, software vendors are doing? So for example, like, are they doing ARM? Is anyone is doing ARM or not? Because you know, ARM is mess. And then the other thing is to, we also try to use this information we are getting from that project is to provide a feedback to certification bodies. So for example, there is one thing I'm you know, involved in the CPU equivalency working group. Currently the, the rules, especially the NIAP policy five, are extremely strict you know, in terms of you know, what processor you are using because they are extremely worried that if you will you know, use different Intel processor, it will give you completely different you know, results. So uh, it will, you know, you know, the security will not be there. It's nonsense because you know, if let's say the encryption would be you know, weak because of one Intel processor is different to another Intel processor, we would have bigger problems. It would probably not boot at all, but it doesn't matter. So one of the things that we are trying to do is like, hey, how much time and how much money we can save by having like more CPU equivalency than uh, not having one. So this is for the business analysis part. And then of course there are you know, like, like limitless potential, what you can do, so other use cases, this could be useful for labs. They can you know, again see what their competition is doing, uh, what vendors, what are the new vendors, so we can you know, start to spam them. Actually I'm getting this spam like every day for certification schemes, government agencies. So there are, you know, you know, a lot of you know, different, different, you know, use cases. And, okay, so I will try live demo. It's questionable. I hate live demos because even, you know, this morning, yeah, this morning the tool was, not the tool documentation was broken. A few days ago it was broken completely. So the demo was impossible. And there was one guy, you know, who spent a lot of time on trying to get it ready for pres this presentation and the other presentation. It's how it works. Uh, one of the reasons why it is, is all these, you know, certifications artifacts are basically some website that needs to be parsed or some PDF. So if, let's say, they, s they change the certification page that lists all certificates, everything breaks. So there's always this you know, manual work that needs to be updated. So this is how the page looks like. This is the web. And uh, for example, let's say you are interested in uh, CC. So we can go to this you know, common criteria page. And now I want to search for, uh, so this is the list of you know, all the certificates that were downloaded. I will search for all of our certificates you can see it goes down to Red Hat Enterprise Linux free. I even don't know where to find you know, these you know, PDFs because even internally very likely these are lost already. And uh, yeah, so you can go for example the latest one, Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8.6 and you can see things you know, that were extracted from the certificate. You can actually get the PDF from local download, so if one day NIAP will remove it from their website, it will be still you know, archived. It's always you know, transferred to the text file, and uh, you can see a lot of you know, different you know, information from, from certificate, what, you know, the, what are the algorithms used, and all this you know, information is extracted in some way from, from the page. And yeah, these, these are the heuristics about the CVEs. So, you know, what, you know, the CPEs are used to match against RHEL. And you can see that, you know, in this, you know, certified pro product, there might be some CVEs. I would be very likely able to dispute all of these in like a in few, few minutes. But basically, we are looking in a way how to make this, you know, analysis more precise. 
that might be, you know, my PhD from my thesis later. And you can basically see exactly the same thing. Uh, I go back. There are some people doing FIPS here. So again, I can, you know, search for Red Hat certificates and you can see all the historical and active certificates that we, you know, did in the past. And basically, this is all, you know, parts from uh, these, you know, different NIAPs and uh, websites. So I was talking about the security target, and this is how the security target looks like. It's PDF, so again, it needs to be extracted in some way. My table will be talking about the, the ways how we use, and you can see this is the documentation that basically describes all the security functionality of uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux. I believe this is 9.0 at the moment. And this is for the cryptographic module validation. So this is how the certificate looks like for, for FIPS. So this is Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8, open SSL cryptographic module under FIPS 140-2. And basically, again, these things are, are in some way extracted and uh, saved in the database. And this is how the security policy looks like. One of the you know that features I talked about is and before I will you know give uh, the word to Mathieu are uh, yeah, sorry for this are the references so you can see there could be you know this you know huge graphical representation of all different all relationships between you know, different certificates and you can see the wall ecosystem is huge. So you can't, you know, manually do it on your own. And I believe it's time for Mathieu. So give us a second. Uh, so I will talk more about the business analysis, uh, uh, more like give you ideas what's poss what possible and what's not, or currently not. Uh, we can begin with a brief description of the API. Uh, it's written in Python. Uh, you can just install it from pip. Uh, the API or the tool or framework does uh, the downloading or Run, you can run the entire uh, pipeline for extracting, or you can just download the prepared data set from uh, Masaryk University website right now, or s server, and you can then, after you have the data set, you can then uh, work with it using the tool. Uh, there are bindings to pandas data frames, and you can't really do extensions to the pipeline, uh, but you can do like through the API, but you can extend it very easily in code. Uh, so what we are doing is we use uh, Jupyter Notebooks because they are widely used, they are uh, great for data analysis, and uh, you can use Python with, with all the awesome libraries like Pandas and Matplotlib and so on. Uh, we, pro we will provide, hopefully soon, open source uh, notebooks, which you can customize to get some general analysis and with, of the parties you choose. So for example, of the company and its uh, competition. And yeah, you will always need to extend it to your use cases because everyone has different use cases. Uh, one more thing, I, or one part of what I've done uh, during this semester project is uh, I've extended artifacts extraction to extract data about CPUs. Uh, yeah, they explained why that's uh, important, but you can also extract. Basically, 
uh, you can extract whatever you need from the certificates. Uh, it's based on regular exp expressions. And one thing to keep in mind is it, it can be inaccurate because uh, you have no context. Basically, the, the expression is matched against the entire text, text uh, which is converted from the PDFs, so from certificates, security targets, and validation reports, and FIPS equivalents. So this is uh, some information about scheme. Where you are, when you are choosing a scheme, you might want to look at, for example, what, what product, uh, products are usually certified under that scheme. You can see uh, friends mostly does uh, ICs, so integrated circuits and smart cards. Uh, and for us, for example, operating systems are mostly done by US and Germany. Uh, then another thing you need to keep in mind when choosing a scheme is if you want to use a protection profile, which is basically like a template for uh, the validation. So for example, for operating system, you use OSPP or operating system protection profile, or you want to do a ELA uh, evaluation, assurance level based uh, evaluation, which is like you can specify what requirements you have on the product, and that's tested. Uh, so as you can see, uh, US scheme, which uh, Red Hat this certification under, is basically doing only the protection profiles, while the European schemes uh, do a mixture, but uh, they basically prefer ELA. Uh, then this is. Uh, the same thing about laboratories, which there might be, the product category might be more imp important here because the laboratory might already have the equipment and hardware necessary for the, for the evaluation. So for example, when we're doing operating systems, it's great if the laboratory is prepared to do that. Uh, one thing you might notice here is that uh, some laboratories are not, not in the chart at all because this is one of the, as, as I talked, the limitation of, of the tool. Uh, sometimes they are not match, matched correctly. So for example, uh, at Red Hat we use or used ATSEC and Acumen or work with them. They are not there. Uh, they are, our certificates uh, fall under US here. Uh, this is not something that cannot be changed, but right now it's like that. So uh, we are going to skip this. Okay, so another thing you might be, think you might be interested in is how long does the certification uh, take? Uh, here you can see on the graph uh, the lifetime or life cycle of RHEL and its certificates uh, per, per version. And as you can see, the, the certificates, certificates be, become valid uh, in all the cases almost at the end of the support, uh, full support or, or extended support period. And uh, basically take almost two years. That, that's the time, uh, that's the length of the period. So this really brings up a question of whether you then use the extended support or uh, another option, or you continue using the certified, carefully certified, evaluated uh, product, which should be secure, but is outdated and unsupported, or whether you use an, the next version, uh, because not all versions are certified, because it takes time and money, and so on, uh, or you use the, the uncertified but up-to-date and supported version, which governments would choose probably the certified one because they require that, but it's questionable whether that's more uh, secure. Okay, the same thing in FIPS. Uh, this is uh, in FIPS, uh, let me return re here, uh, basically, you don't have data in common criteria about uh, how long 
no public data about how long the certification takes. This is, you just have the start date and end date of the validity, validity period. And that's all, but in FIPS, on the other hand, uh, there is the CMVP program, I had briefly mentioned, which maintains a list uh, of certifications in process and uh, during validation, this will, we will come to. And basically, six search tools tool, what it does, it uh, takes snapshots and allows you to reconstruct how the cryptographic module basically goes through the validation process. So this is implementations under test. On the right, there is uh, the number of certifications under test over time. So you can see it's, there is a lot of certifications. And on the left, there is uh, time uh, spent basically over the years uh, in, the, in this phase. Uh, so this, one, this is something you won't find anything else. Laboratories sometimes publish this, but it's not really up to date. If a certificate comes here, uh, comes on the list tomorrow, you will probably see in sectors once it does the processing, which is, I think, quickly. Uh, the same thing for modules in process. So this is basically how much time is spent in the steps in the validation process once the module is already tested. Uh, you can see, yeah, th there it was about, uh, this is in days, so about, let's say, maybe 300, 200 days uh, on average. And here you can see, uh, it basically is, in, in review, the, uh, there is all, almost 200 days spent, and in coordination, maybe 100 days. So as I had said, the certification can take year, two years, sometimes three years, sometimes even more. Uh, then once the certificates are processed, this is just some uh, information about the validity period. As you can see, it has gone down, as you would probably expect. Uh, from the security standpoint, it's not really easy to like maintain that, that a product is secure for so long. So in FIPS and in CC, it's now uh, two years. Uh, as you might have seen on the life, life cycle uh, graph, it's just two for RHEL because uh, RHEL is certified under the US scheme, so, so NIAP, which requires just two years to be, I think, more secure. Okay, this is some example of the data uh, we have extracted from the data set. Uh, so you can see it's, it's doable. You can basically get, get the data. This is FIPS. Uh, and yeah, uh, some of, the, some of these, these modules are basically done for multiple dif different architectures, then I think we can skip this one. Uh, okay, there is also a lot more. I just showed some, some stuff on the website, but it's all in the data set. You can do it in Python or whatever language you, you like. Uh, there are the SARs, SFRs, CVEs, references, algorithms, libraries, and more. Uh, there is concrete information, so what most of what I've shown is some aggregates or num numeric data, but you can see precisely the data. And you can analyze competition. Uh, we didn't really show that, but this is developers conference, so uh, yeah. Uh, just some conclusion. The, we used the, the tool and the data set internally at Red Hat. It has allowed us to compare competition, what we are doing, what laboratories are doing. Uh, some supplementary data can be beneficial. This was the case with the life cycles. The life cycles are, are not part of the data set. Uh, yeah, there are sometimes problems with inaccurate data and business decides security. Uh, yeah, as, as we've seen, business sometimes 
the desired security. Uh, this is a QR code to the website, but you can easily Google it. Uh, it's the project is financed under or co-funded by the uh, by the European Union and is under the Chess project. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Uh, this is thank you for attention. <laughs>